what is up guys welcome back let's talk about some convoy raiding now this is one of the most interesting parts of this game in my opinion the battle of the Atlantic can and in my opinion should be a big deal and it is a, a really fun kind of mini game within the bigger game that the British and the Germans and and to a lesser extent the Americans and Italians take part in but while I do love the convoy rating in this game and how they set it up, it also is one of the most complicated aspects of this game and can be very, very confusing for new players. So with that being said, let's go. Now, if you remember from my very first video in this series, these little dotted lines are called convoy lines and they've each got a roundel and a number on them. Now obviously the roundel is signifies who that convoy line belong who that convoy line belongs to. So this one right here is a British line and this five right here is the maximum amount of IPPs that the British can lose from that convoy line in any given turn. Convoy ring is where your German submarines are gonna shine in this game and they really become an important factor. The way that the convoy rating works is, so we're going to take this guy for example because he doesn't have any planes with him or anything. He's just alone right here and he wants to raid this line, which as you can see right here, has a maximum of six IPPs that you can take from it. And the way this is going to work is both the owner of the sub and the owner of the convoy line are each, are each going to roll a D6. And now these D6 are going to have certain modifiers on them, which I will discuss in a second. But the basic principle is they're each going to roll a D6. And if the raiding player rolls a higher number than the defending player. So for our first example, we'll make it easy, right? So we'll say the German player with the sub roll a 6 and the British player here rolled a 1 defending. What's going to happen is you're going to take the difference between these two dice, in this case, five, and you're going to, and the British player is immediately going to lose five IPPs from their bank. So whatever existing money they have, they just lose five IPPs from it. And then you mark how much damage you've done to this line. So in this example, we did five IPPs. So for the rest of this turn, the British can only lose one more IPP from this entire convoy line. So from up here all the way down to where it ends right here, the British can only lose one more dollar on this line. Now they can still lose five from this line and they've got a couple more lines throughout the board that they can lose a ton of money from, but on this one in particular, they can only lose one more dollar. Now, both fortunately and unfortunately, it's never just a straight up one-to-one -one roll. Um, both sides can have modifiers on their rolls, which thankfully are listed in this handy dandy table 9.8 on page 43. So if you just read here, this base submarine that we we're using from the Germans is gonna get a plus two modifier. So if we look at our roll here, this would actually be an eight which means the, di the real difference right here is a seven and our British player would actually lose the full six IPPs from this line and now that line is, is done for until the end of the next British turn when it will reset. So, looking back at this chart, coastal subs only get a plus one modifier so you roll your die and you add a plus one to them now this plus zero, Mine Warfare, and these convoy rating aircraft are optional rules that I'm not gonna talk about. Uh, you can read these and add them if you want. I'm not gonna mention them, they're pretty easy. You just read the little blurb and apply the, the modifiers. Now the important ones to remember here are gonna be plus one for coastal subs. Germany starts with one coastal sub. I think the Italians start with three in 1936. So they get a plus one to their roll. Your normal submarines get a plus two. And your advanced subs get a plus four, which is badass. I freaking love advanced subs. They're awesome. <laughs> but that's an opinion. You don't have to love them. I do. Now, 
the defense can also get modifiers. Now, just base at the start of the game, it's going to be a plus zero. So, as I mentioned in our example here, the German die is a six plus two. The British die here is a one plus zero because they have zero modifiers. The British can work to increase those via escorting surface warships, which I'll talk about in a second. Maritime air patrol, which I'll talk about in a second. And then two via technologies, radar and advanced anti-sub warfare. Um, so those are might be some text that, that the British want to invest in if the Germans are going after advanced subs. You know, it's up to them. They don't really have a ton of tech rolls, so, you know, it's up to the British player, but that's a good way to increase your modifier on those convoy rolls. So now, just as a quick recap, the way that convoy rating works, your sub wants to attack this line. What you do is you roll two dice here. Again, the Germans are this red one, the British are this black one. We've got a three versus a three, but since the Germans have a sub, they get plus two to their roll. The British have no convoy modifiers, so the British will lose two dollars off this line. You will mark your damage. The British will lose two bucks straight away out of their bank. And then this damage will come off after the next British turn and the Germans and Italians will be able to start convoying this line again up to its maximum damage value of six. Now just real quickly, there are C zones on the board, for example, C zone 79 here, where there are an intersection of convoy lines. So we've got a British six here, a British three, and another British six all intersecting in C zone 79 here. So that's big trouble for the British. They can actually lose the total of all three convoy lines in this C zone. So six plus six plus three is 15. There's some quick math for you. And at this intersection right here, the defending player can assign the convoy damage received as he sees fit to each of the lines. Um, so, you know, if the German has multiple subs, so say we've got a sub here and a sub here, you might want to roll for this sub first because, the, as I said, the attacking player gets to choose the order. So you'd probably want to roll for this one first just in case if you hit here. The British player doesn't put it all on this line and limit the effective damage of this sub because, again, you can only do six damage to this line. And in this intersection, the British player gets to choose on which line the damage occurs. Down here in C-Zone 83, we have an intersection of two different powers convoy lines one being an FEC 3 here, and the other being this British 1. So the way the damage will happen here is the country with the most money to lose will lose money first. So usually the British will lose $1 before damage starts coming off this FEC 3 line here. So that's what happens if it's two different major powers. And again, here, with an intersection of all three British, the British player can choose on which line the damage comes off. And of course, you can have more than one sub in a given season, and they both roll separately, and they both apply their damage up to the maximum amount available. Okay, and there are a couple of things that the British can do to defend their convoy lines. The first and easiest being escort duty here. So what you can do is take any surface ship, put them out here, and declare them to be on escort duty, and they just sit there. And they can be on escort duty indefinitely, and you can move them off anytime you want. Uh, however, enemy surface ships may ignore ships on escort duty. Um, so if the Germans had a navy out here for some reason with surface ships, such as cruisers or battleships, they could ignore this guy and just move right through without having to engage in combat. However, if the Germans wanted to, they could attack this destroyer on escort duty. So his surface ships could either ignore it and move through, or they could also attack it if they wanted to. And if there were other British ships in this sea zone, not on escort duty, and they got attacked, the destroyer would also be able to participate in that defense combat. That's the only 
a uh, really weird thing about Escort Diddy. Other than that, if this German sub wanted to convoy this line with an Escort Destroyer there, then the defending roll would get a plus one. So back to our example here. Germans get a three plus two because they're a sub. And in this case, the British would get a three plus one for that escorting ship and we're gonna lose one dollar from this roll. In addition, the escorting ship will get one defense roll against each German sub that convoys, that tries to raid a convoy in this sea zone. So this destroyer would get a roll of four and if it hit, that submarine would die. So it's pretty dangerous for the Germans to go raiding with ships on escort duty. The next thing the British can do to defend their convoy lines is put planes on maritime air patrol. Now, a plane on maritime air patrol blocks all enemy movement through sea zones. So a plane can detect subs. No other unit in the game can seek out subs to attack except for planes on maritime air patrol. And the stipulations of maritime air patrol are that from anywhere on the board, a plane can fly to engage in maritime air patrol and they protect the entire sea zone. But all planes have a patrol range of one or two, meaning that to leave maritime air patrol, they must be one move away from an area that they can land in. Otherwise, they cannot engage in maritime air patrol. And the way that your maritime air patrol works is you get two, a plus two modifier to your roll. Uh, if this sub tries to convoy this sea zone, this plane will add a plus two to the convoy's defense roll, meaning that it is exactly even. In this scenario, we would have the sub at a three plus two and the defense at a three plus two as well, meaning the British lose zero dollars. In addition, if this sub tries to convoy this line, this plane can engage in a round of combat and shoot at the sub. If it hits, the sub is dead. The sub cannot return fire. Subs cannot shoot planes ever in this game, which makes sense. But so the plane will get one round of combat against the sub before it probably uh, submerges, which is a special ability of the subs. They can forego their defense rolls uh, in lieu of submerging and disappearing from sight. So generally, if they're being attacked, they will the attacking player will get one round of combat against subs. So now another great thing about maritime air patrol is it is a combat move. So if the German leaves this sub here at the end of his turn and the British has this fighter, say in London, the British player can choose to go one, two and engage in his maritime air patrol. And then he will be able to immediately engage that sub in combat for one round which means the plane will get a roll of six at the sub. And if it hits, the sub dies. If it misses, the sub can escape and submerge. So that's cool. The best way to kill subs in this game is to use your planes on maritime air patrol. In addition, destroyers may pair one to one with planes on maritime air patrol to also get a shot at that sub. So if this plane had this destroyer here, they would each get one shot at the sub. The plane for a six, the destroyer for four, if they both, both miss, the sub escapes. If either one of them hits, the sub dies. Now, this is a little bit more dangerous for the British player because the submarine's decision to submerge happens after the attacker rolls. So if both the plane and the destroyer miss, the German player will probably decide to submerge their sub. If not, if the sub is hit, so whether it be by the plane or the destroyer, if the sub knows it's gonna die, the German player will probably decide to return fire instead of submerging because they already know it's gonna die. You know, what, what else do they have to lose? So in that case, the sub will return fire with a three and can, can potentially hit this destroyer. Now, as I said, submarines cannot hit planes. So if you don't bring, bring the destroyer along, the submarine will never be able to return fire. But if you do bring the destroyer, you have a little bit better chance to hit that sub, but it can also hit you if it knows it's gonna die. So remember that. 
This guy right here is a special unit. This is a seaplane. You may have noticed earlier I said that planes have a maritime air patrol range of one, meaning they have to always be within one space of being able to land somewhere. Seaplanes are pretty cheap for aircraft. I believe they're seven off the top of my head. Um, and they have a maritime air patrol range of two, meaning if they want to land, they can go boop, boop, one, two, which means they can cover these outer areas in the Atlantic, which they are the only aircraft in the game that has a range of two, except for medium bombers if you get long range aircraft. So you have to get a tech if you want your medium bombers to be able to uh, maritime air patrol two spaces away from being able to land. Now, seaplanes only attack at a three, so they're not quite as effective at hitting the subs, but again, you can also pair the destroyers with them to get a roll at a three and a roll at a four at this sub. So, they're pretty cheap for aircraft, and they're good at covering those middle areas. They're also, I've seen them be used down here on Af Africa, where the British have a lot of range to cover. There's a line that goes all the way around Africa and so seaplanes can be effective down there for the straggler subs that make it down there. Last thing is aircraft on aircraft carriers are considered to always be on maritime air patrol um, just for simplicity. You don't have to put your little chip down. They are always on maritime air patrol. So if a, if a sub tries to move through a sea zone with an aircraft carrier, that aircraft carrier can decide to engage in combat with its aircraft paired one-to-one -one with destroyers. So, these escort carriers with a fighter are going to be very, very effective at hunting down the subs in the Atlantic because they can move three, they can keep up with the enemy subs, and the air, your airplanes will always be within range of landing. One last thing, guys, that's a little bit interesting is your planes, so say it is the start of the British turn, you can bring this plane out here to attack. You can declare maritime air patrol, attack this sub, and whether you hit it or miss, you can disengage during your non-combat move and return to land with your movement range of one. So you can both enter maritime air patrol and exit on the same turn. It's basically just like any other attack. But you can also leave planes on maritime air patrol indefinitely which is, could be a good idea if you've got some German subs escaping through this northern route here. You can drop a fighter up here and just leave him there for the rest of the game. And every time a German sub tries to sneak through this northern area, your airplane will get a shot at him as he drives by. So you can essentially block passage of German subs through this area without any retaliation because subs again cannot shoot airplanes so and that's your crash course guys on convoy rating it's a pretty complicated part of the game let me know if you have any questions um, but it's also a really important and really fun part of this game as well all right i'll see you next time